Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and part one of our build of HMS Fly by Victory Models. This is a 164 scale wooden model ship um, and she is a sixth rate swan class. So this particular model depicts her as she was in 1776. It doesn't include sails, it doesn't include the stand um, and I have the upgrade set which changes the trucks for the cannons from being cast metal to um, wood trucks that you can then rig. Um, other than that, um, it's pretty much a straight box build. Um, if you've never built a wooden model ship before and you really want to do one then my recommendation would be to get yourself um, the Caldercraft Schooner Pickle. Um, it's an excellent easy ship to build with excellent um, instructions. Um, but the principles of building a wooden model ship we will cover in this video or series of videos I should say. Um, so I have already done um, a first impressions video um, for this kit and I'll put a link to that at the end of the video. Um, we start um, like you would do with any model kit by going through the instructions and getting yourself familiar with them. Um, in the case of a wooden model ship we have an additional step of numbering some of the components. So in this case um, we've got three sheets that we need to go through um, and mark up the positions of all of these on their uh, wood trees. So I've already done that um, and on these internal parts I've numbered um, on the actual part because that'll be easier when we come to build it um, and then some parts I've numbered externally because I don't want any pencils showing through, although these will be painted. Um, you have a choice right from the start as to whether you're going to do it in the natural wood or whether you're going to do it in uh, by painting it. And you get a combination in this kit of um, solid wood parts, which would look nice, sanded and under varnish. Um, and you've got the fiberboard that will never be seen. And there are also um, plywood parts where you will see the ply on the edges. So generally I tend to paint my models. One quick word of warning if you are building fly, this layout here is very different to the layout on the actual sheet of wood. Uh, and so some careful studies needed to make sure you get the, the right numbering. Um, I've not seen that before. Usually the layout in the plan is the same as the layout on the wood. So obviously they've rearranged um, the laser plan, laser programming plan um, at some point since they printed these original um, instruction sheets. Okay, so what we want to try and do is build this framework up so we get something that looks like that. Um, so the instructions um, take you through that process um, and then we have these images there which give you an idea. Now, so we need to start by removing these parts. Um, now I've already done that, but I'm gonna show you the best way of going about that. So as you can see, I've taken a number of these parts out. Uh, and what we have left is actually, um, it's a build stand, but we can easily make this a display stand, um, which is my intention. So with the point of a, a blade, these are laser cut and there'll be some tabs, two or three tabs. So you're just finding the tab and cutting through it. And then this is five millimeters thick, so it's quite thick. You may need to go through and push through on the other side. There we go, that's one, that's two. There's no need to go through with a saw. Now don't be tempted to push them out. Um, you can push them out, 
But what tends to happen where the uh, t uh, tab is, is it rips uh, and it could, especially on the stand, it, it could ruin your finish, um, but it could interfere with um, how good the fit of your uh, other parts are. So it's best to just get your knife and cut those little bits out. Now I'm going to cut these out um, now because we want to use some of this um, spare timber for part of our building process, um, which you will uh, see as we get to it. So let me just remove this. It's usually quite easy to see where the tabs are. saying that I've missed one. There we go. Don't get rid of this, you're going to use it. Okay, so that's our uh, display stand. Anyway, Put that to one side for now because we won't need it for a little while. Okay, um, what I want you to do next is get yourself um, a little saw. So I have my saw, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut these two sections out. Um, so Let's do that, and we're going to use these for helping keep our support straight. So the instructions call this ply, but it's clearly fiberboard, um, which I'm guessing is a cost reduction for them. Right, doesn't have to be um, smart this. There we go. So each one of these needs to now be cut up um, so that we've got um, in total eight pieces. Um, and I'll show you what we're going to do with those in a bit. Okay, so the first part that we're going to um, cut out is this. This is the main keel. Okay. So once you've removed it, we need to just clean up these points here, which is where the tabs were. And that's just to make sure that everything sits okay. We don't need to remove all this laser scorching. So we just want it to be smooth um, and no raised point. There's a little tab in here. And we'll just go around and then there's a tab here on the bottom. And then what I need you to do um, once you've taken all the tabs out, there's another one here. Once you've got all the tabs down, um, this um, stern point here, we need to just take the um, charring away from that. I'll probably do. It's just enough to be able to see some pencil marks. So we have our keel, we've sanded down where the tabs are and we've sanded down the stern post. So next we need to take out all of these ribs like that.
um, and we want to do exactly the same as we've just done with this wherever our um, tab connection points are we just want to file those away so it's nice and smooth again we don't need to take any of this away at this point so um, once as we take a tab away and sand it we want to just fit it into its slot and test fit that it fits okay and see whether we need to open up any of these slots um, sometimes the fit can be a little bit tight so I put the first one in here like so so we go along doing that just be mindful that there are three of these slots which are actually not for the, these ribs but for the masts so that one there they're typically a bit wider that one there and this one that's at an angle here um, so for main mizzen mast so when you're putting them in just make sure you put them in the right slots right so I'll go away and do that and come back to you when that's done so we now have the basic ribs in place um, all of mine have fitted okay um, what you want to do is make sure that they're all flush with this um, line here but as you can see they are quite loose so we will have to make sure that we're um, clamping these together and that's what these two bits of, of wood are going to be for okay so um, next in the instructions it's asking you to take these parts off so um, the bow uh, and the false keel um, now these fit in here and the instructions ask you to take them on um, but we're not going to do that we're going to leave these off for now um, and I'll, you'll see why uh, when we get to it in a moment so um, there is no no um, fit issues with these parts and when you put these together um, like so that should be longer than the length of your um, main part there foot part 14 so don't worry if it's too long but don't don't cut anything off just leave it so um, the next bits you need to cut off are these bits here um, so these are planking aids so exactly the same thing we just need to um, remove them and um, file down the connecting tabs so we should have two sixteens which look like they go on the stern two seventeens two fifteens and two eighteens So these, when we come to attach them, will go here. So the 18 will go at the front there and glue in place there. And then this one, the 17, will go in there. And then this wider one, 15, will go in there, all level with the bottom of the of the keel and then when we come to um, file and, and shape this we'll shape that as well and it gives you a little bit of an extra area now some people uh, will put um, plywood between these and and make that that whole curve full but we don't really need to do that um, on a if we were doing a single planked hull it's definitely worth doing but as we're doing a double planked hull which means we're, we're putting two layers of planking on we we don't really need it 
So now all the frames are fitted, the next thing is to test fit the lower deck. Um, exactly the same process. We remove it from the board, um, um, file away any tabs, and then we just test fit this. Should keep everything um, nice and rigid then. So again, we've not added any glue at this point, we're just dry fitting everything. So the instructions will tell you to do um, the following. It is recommended that the stern area of the false keel, number 14, which is the main frame at the bottom, to which the rudder post 36 will be glued, is sanded to roughly half its original width. This is because once the second planking is complete, the width of the stern should be very similar to the 5mm width of the rudder post. Hence less sanding will be required to attain a flush finish between the keel edge and the rudder post. So what does that mean? What they mean is, this bit here needs to be thinned down so that this is roughly half as thick as it currently is and we know that that's five millimeters um, and the reason is when we put the first layer of planking on we're adding thickness to that and then we put the second layer of planking on which is much thinner and we're adding even more thickness so then to get the shape right you're going to do more sanding and what's actually quite possible is that you could sand through the first planking altogether and if you're wanting to show your model in its natural woods rather than painting it, then um, that's going to cause you a problem. So, how do we go about doing that? Well, what we're going to do is take a pencil and we're going to make sure these ribs are all pushed down all the way and then we're going to draw a line like so. And that becomes the area that we need to sand away. Now then, on some models, on older models, tends not to be the approach these days, but on, on older model kits you'll sometimes have um, these parts here as part of this. Or you may put um, a stern post on separately like we have but not in um, a nice hardwood so it all depends on who your manufacturer is and the age of your kit so we have got to put these on now these when varnished will look really nice um, but we have the same issue all the way along here as we have here in as we're going to be putting two layers of planking on. So even though the instructions aren't asking us to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to put a bevel on the edge here. Um, let me get a piece of paper and explain to you what we're going to do. Okay, so this is a cross-section view and the little square at the bottom is this strip that we're going to glue to the bottom of this. That longer rectangle is this bit here in cross section. So we're looking at it end on with this bit stuck on there. So when we come to plank, we're going to put a first layer of planking down that's going to sit like that and the same on that side and 
and then we'll have another one and so on you get the idea then we're going to put a second layer of planking on top of that which will be thinner but effectively just like the instructions have dis um, described we're thickening that up and what we do what we're actually going to do is reduce the gap between that and that and in some places that's not going to quite look right so we want to preserve this as a nice clean even line all the way so the way we're going to do that is we're going to put a bevel in on each side like that so this bit will no longer exist because we've put a bevel on and then when we glue this post on it we're going to have this little cutaway and what will happen is the first layer of planking will sit in there and then the second layer will sit on top and will sit inside that bevel and underneath this part so that we've or as or nearly so that we've got a nice straight edge and it also gives us somewhere for that plank to sit because that keel plank um, is always fairly difficult to fit or can be um, so rather than doing what the instructions are going to tell us to do which will be to lie our two layers of planking straight on top of a fed set of ribs we're going to put a little bevel in there so that the planking can sit um, nice and tightly in there we're going to sand this down um, so that we've reduced the thickness of this which is why we've also um, filed this down so we can see what we're doing so um, it says to reduce it by half we know that this is five millimeters um, so I'm going to suggest that we take we leave a two millimeter strip in the middle um, and take one and a half millimeters off each side um, so what we need is a two millimeter thick piece of masking tape to run up there to help us as a guide when we're sanding this I hope that sort of makes sense right let's go and get some two millimeter masking okay so we need to draw this in on the other side as well so what we're going to do is just mark that spot off there so our end position is the same and do the same there so I know that we're going from this point here to that point there And then I want to make sure we've got a nice curve to this. Now, um, just want when we take this back, it needs to be fairly gradual. So I just want it to look as nice as we can we can make it. So I'm using frame seven here. Rip seven. There we go. Okay. So next thing we want to do is just check the thickness of this. So we're told it's five millimeters. Let's just check that. Got there. Five five. Okay. So 
going to put some um, tape on the back of this. And we want that tape to be two millimeters wide. So we've agreed two millimeters. You see how you're involved in that decision, so it's your responsibility as much as it is mine. That's how we roll. Okay, so we now have our two millimeter strip. It's a little tricky to do this on camera, but what we need to do is find that center point. And then do two millimeters. So that's one millimeter either side. Okay, so we now have our two millimeters of masking tape. So we can see as a guide how narrow this needs to be now. So next job is actually to sand this down before we do anything else. Um, and to use that, we are going to use some permagrit file tools. Now these are the very best tools for um, this work and for fairing the um, the ribs and for sanding the, the planks. I have two, two rolls of these. This is the coarse one and then exactly the same but fine. Um, what I like about these is they they do not um, they do not clog. Um, so we'll use this this nice round one, I think, and probably this flat one, and possibly these ones. So put them to one side and get them out. So we're going to start we're going to start by uh, putting a little groove in along this line. That's going to start to form the channel that we're going to use to butt up against. Now, we want to take material away fairly quickly. Um, so we're going to start on the corner and what we want to do is bring it gradually up to the full thickness. Let me just get in a better position. You can see this doesn't clog and it's taking material away very quickly. So we're almost down to where we want to be. So we'll just check that. So we've taken, we're about halfway down to where we want to be on this side. Right, I'm going to now change 
to find a, a grit. Which is going to allow me to take less away and so I can do this in a bit more controlled manner towards the end. You can see we're taking that down nice and even um, and what we want to do is for it to ramp up and blend in um, so that as we do the planking the planking will follow that that curve down as well so we're very very near to done there right now then we said we were going to run a bevel along this full length um, and we'll do that all the way up to this point here so we'll do that now while we're at it I'm using the coarse one here being careful not to put too much stress on this because um, this is not as strong as plywood would be and I'm a bit worried we might snap it if we're not careful So all we've done is just round that corner off effectively so that it's easier to lay that first and second row of planking when we come to it. And as a look at that, I think we're nearly there. So what's important is whatever you take off on this side, you take off exactly the same on the other side. Right, I will do the other side and come back to you when we have completed narrowing our stern. Okay, so we have now thinned down this corner. I want to just take a bevel now up that leading edge on both sides there. So in the same process as we have done here along the bottom of the keel there okay so that is it for this initial bit of sanding uh, and this should help us lay our planks down quite considerably um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, so we have done all the um, filing that we need to do um, to these parts prior to uh, assembly. Now the instructions um, do state that you should bevel these parts before you fix them in. Uh, now normally what I would do is not do that and fix these in place and we would sand all of them together. I don't like the idea of pre-beveling it um, because ultimately what we want to do is make sure that our planking strips um, fit the fit flush against the full surface area and I'd, I'm just concerned we could take too much away doing that. Anyhow Next thing I want to do is make sure that I'm perfectly familiar with the placing of these um, uh, bow and stern formers. So um, part 18 here is located in front of 
part one. So we know that one goes there. And therefore that goes there. Then 17 is located between bulkhead one and two. So that is there. We want that to be in line with the curve of this part here. Okay. Um, Fifteen is located between parts two and three. And again, that needs to be. So that's clear where we're gluing those. And what you could do is you could cut some off cuts off the frame and step back another level if you wished. Um, so when you come to wrap your planking round, you've got a little bit of extra support. So that's quite possible. And then 16 is located between bulkhead 12 and 13, which is over at this side here. So 13 being the piece that mounts right on the end there. So it is going in there like that. And the tail edge of that is going over where we've sanded. Um, so quite a bit of sanding to be done at, at the stern area still. So, now we're absolutely sure where these parts are going, we can actually start gluing these together. But we're going to do that in the next video. I think um, that's it for the first stages. What we've done is we have got ourselves ready for constructing the frames. So we have removed the frame parts from their um, sheets. We've cleaned them up. We've sanded down the stern corner um, and we've put a back line in um, along the, the keel edge there. Um, we've cleaned up all our parts and we've made our eight little um, blocks that are going to help us with keeping these straight. Okay, um, I hope that was useful. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there's, this is going to be a series of, um, of build videos that will take quite some time to do. Um, it's not something that I'm going to be working on constantly, so the videos might be a little bit intermittent. Um, and also, there will be periods of time where I'm doing lots and lots of repetitive work and I can show you in a half an hour video how to do it and then I've got to go away and do uh, lots of them and that could take two or three weeks at a time. So um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do these videos. I'm probably going to do some how-tos and then some um, progress videos just to try and keep the, the subject flowing. Um, so we will we'll see how it pans out. Anyway, that's it for this one. Many thanks for looking in. Hope, hope to see you all soon. Stay well, everybody.